Hi everyone, I'm David Wilcox, the program leader for Fedora at Lyricis, and I'm joined here today by uh, Aaron Griffith, who is the program coordinator for uh, Fedora at Lyricis. And uh, today we just wanted to provide an update on what's been going on with uh, Fedora 6.0 uh, and talk about how we are uh, working to bring the community forward to this uh, new version of the software. So the, the roadmap for Fedora in 2021 is pretty simple. Um, really, we're just focused on releasing version six, which has been in the works for about two years. It's a pretty major update to the back end of the software. And at the same time, we're really committed to releasing robust uh, migration tooling and documentation uh, in order to support the community and being able to move forward to this uh, latest version of the software. Um, and that is a big part of the sort of third point here. Once the software and the tooling has been released, really a lot of our focus is going to be on uh, making sure that the community can use the software, migrate to the software, and come forward to uh, version six of Fedora. So Fedora 6 has uh, several benefits. We're just going to cover things at kind of a high level here. Um, the main ones are providing enhanced support for digital preservation, uh, which is something that uh, our community has asked for for some time, as well as uh, improved performance and scale, particularly relative to uh, version 4 and 5. Uh, as well as making migrations easier and also making sure that we can have fewer migrations into the future. And these are all things that we have heard from our community uh, that they've wanted. And, and so a lot of uh, what we've been doing with version six is trying to respond to those needs. So one of the major new features of uh, version six is uh, the, the adoption of the Oxford common file layout. And, and this is really just a simple open standard for how to organize uh, the content in your repository using a fairly simple file and folder structure uh, that supports digital preservation best practices. And this is uh, an emerging standard uh, that goes beyond the Fedora community. Uh, but one that we think uh, really satisfies a lot of the needs of our users um, and that is seeing a uh, fairly broad adoption uh, in other digital preservation contexts. So in terms of the current status, uh, we're making really good progress. In December, we released an alpha build of uh, version 6. And uh, in February, we released uh, a beta. And this beta is uh, feature complete. Uh, and so uh, we anticipate uh, over the next few months to be able to get to a full production release uh, certainly within the first half of this year, um, once we've done sufficient uh, testing and validation and acceptance um, in, the, in the community. And so this work is also supported by uh, a grant project that we've been working on since September. Uh, this is funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Uh, and the focus of the grant is uh, move, uh, helping the community move from version three of Fedora to version six. Uh, and so this is a $250,000 grant that is uh, taking place over 18 months. And so the challenge that this grant is trying to address is that most Fedora installations are still running unsupported versions of the software. So version three or, or even earlier uh, than that, which has not been supported for um, some years. Uh, and while software does tend to come and go, uh, what's really important here is the content. So there's lots of cultural heritage and uh, scientific research uh, uh, information that's in these repositories. And that content is at risk the longer uh, it sits in this aging infrastructure. Uh, lots of things can go wrong um, once these systems are no longer supported. Uh, and if they fail, all of that content is at risk. But at the same time, migrations take a lot of time and effort. And so there's been a major roadblock in the community for a few years now in being uh, unable to move forward to uh, a more modern supported version of Fedora uh, because the migrations have taken uh, so much time and effort. And so the goal largely of this grant is to bring the community forward to, um, as I said, a modern supported version of Fedora. And this coincides really well with our overall goal for the program. So it's really convenient that this uh, grant came in when it did. Uh, so we're able to work on the grant while still supporting the core, uh, core mission that we have uh, for Fedora this year. The process for the grant is fairly simple. Um, we are working with pilot partners to uh, upgrade and migrate their repositories um, and focused on developing, testing, and refining migration tools. 
um, and we're going to produce some documentation and best practices and package everything up into kind of a toolkit that we can then share uh, with the community um, and then uh, get them to test it and, and give us some feedback on it before uh, we eventually host a, a dedicated migration training event um, at the end of the, uh, the grant period. So we're currently in the first phase of the grant, which is the pilot phase, began in September uh, and runs uh, roughly through to May. And uh, again, the point here is to document uh, the migration and upgrade process uh, and go through it with pilot institutions, as well as detailing things like metadata mapping, uh, decision making, remediation, those kinds of things, uh, with a goal of eventually producing a toolkit for the community. We're working with a couple of pilot partners, uh, the University of Virginia, which has uh, a fedora with a custom front end uh, on it, and then uh, Whitman College, which is uh, an Islandora user. So these both have Fedora 3 repositories in the back end, but different front ends. So we're able to sort of um, run these pilots in different scenarios and, and help a, a broader swath of the community uh, be able to uh, benefit from the work. So phase two will start roughly in June, running through to September. Uh, and the idea here is to take the toolkit that we've produced, share it with the community, uh, solicit feedback, and uh, iterate as needed. And then finally, the third phase, uh, which will begin uh, in the fall, uh, the plan here is to host a uh, roughly two and a half day migration training workshop uh, that is intended to be free to attend, uh, but the grant will provide some travel funding for folks that want to um, travel and, and attend the workshop but might not otherwise be able to afford to. Um, now, just with the COVID situation, we may need to uh, have this workshop a little bit later than planned, perhaps in the spring rather than uh, in the fall, um, but that's still uh, to be determined and that's something we'll um, work out over the next few months. Uh, and then finally, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, opportunity throughout this grant process for uh, feedback, iterations, evaluations. Um, certainly once we organize the workshop, we'll be uh, soliciting feedback from attendees, but also from uh, folks that are trying out the uh, the, the toolkit and, uh, and and other materials that will be uh, uh, developing such as workshop content. Um, and of course, once the grant ends, we still intend to provide ongoing support, uh, and this is largely uh, accomplished through membership funding. So Fedora is a community supported open source program that is funded uh, almost entirely through membership, and we have uh, members all over the world that use the software. Uh, and uh, fund staff positions and our ability to uh, provide uh, training and support uh, software releases to the community. Um, but of course, uh, with uh, co uh, budget cuts related to COVID, this has been a challenge, certainly in the last year. Uh, we've lost about 20% of our membership funding and are working to try to build that back up again. Uh, but membership is really crucial. And the only reason we're able to still provide uh, a, a similar level of services, the same level of staff as we have in past years, really comes down to the, the grant support that we're getting at the moment. But of course the grant is temporary. And so when that runs out, we're going to need to uh, build uh, membership back up or else uh, risk losing uh, staff time and, and be unable to provide the same level of value and, and services to our, uh, to our community. So uh, this is really critically important. We're trying to uh, get the software releases out on time, support the community in adopting and migrating to uh, to Fedora 6.0 to really demonstrate uh, the value of the program. Uh, but we're also working on things at a community engagement, uh, uh, on the community engagement side of things. Uh, and for that, I'm going to turn it over to Aaron, who's going to talk uh, a bit about uh, coming into the program um, as a new uh, as a new employee and uh, working on uh, the ways that we're engaging with our uh, community. So thanks, David. Yes, I'm Aaron, and I'm the community program coordinator at Fedora. Um, when I first started, I didn't have really any clue about uh, digital preservation or about repository management. Um, I come from a background in retail management, so I knew engagement and I knew people, but those actually turned out to be really two good assets for me coming into this role. But being an outsider, when I was onboarding, what I learned was that there was very little of what we were doing that was actually speaking to people like me. So that really became part of my focus, was trying to make Fedora accessible to everyone and generate content that was going to be accessible to people of different levels. So we wanted to, excuse me, showcase our work and make sure that everybody could have access to it. So the first thing that we needed to do was actually just organize our content. 
uh, in the past communication had been kind of ad hoc. We were just recreating and repeating what we'd already been doing in the past. Some of it was working, some of it wasn't. We'd been using multiple outlets to try to connect with our users and our community, and we really didn't have a plan for it. So what David and I did was we laid everything out on paper, wrote it all down, and this inevitably led to the creation of our monthly communication strategy as seen next here. So this is a high level snapshot of all of our communication pieces. It shows who's responsible for the content creation, when they're distributed, where they're distributed and who's responsible for distributing it. So this really sets the framework for what we're doing to engage the community every month. So obviously there's flexibility within that. We can change the order around, but this is really the standard for what we're, we're trying to accomplish. So I'll just run through it really quickly here for you. Um, Every month we release a newsletter, which is a recap of the events and the successes that we've had through the community over the past month. Um, we also like to uh, shout out our partner communities like Sanvera and Islandora and let people know what's going on there. Um, we also put out a, an IMLS grant blog post. So David writes that and it gets posted to our blog to keep the community updated on what's going on there. We also have committed to releasing a monthly demo video on our YouTube channel. So in collaboration with the tech team and some volunteer committers, we created a list of features that we thought would be um, exciting and fun for users to view, um, especially with Fedora 6 coming up so close. We, um, we pulled the feature list from new things uh, coming in Fedora 6 so that our users could get a sneak peek at it as well as refer back to it after the software is out. Um, and then the last thing that we did is uh, what's kind of fun for me is we did a general interest blog post. So once a month, we try to do something a little more high level, a little easier to read, a little more fun to give people a new way of looking at Fedora. So we showcase some different repositories, what people are doing with Fedora. Um, and most recently, we just did a little meet the members blog post where we introduced people to um, some of our governance members. So this is really meant to uh, showcase Fedora in a different light for people. So through the creation of the calendar, we actually realized a few things. And one of those things was that there were things that we were trying and doing that were not successful. So we're a small team, we have limited resources, both time and money, and we really wanted to focus our approach on doing fewer things, but doing them better. So what we did is we ended up ditching some of our low return channels um, in lieu of making quality items, you know, over quantity. So I think a lot of times people just think they should try everything and hope that something sticks. But when you're on a tight budget like this, it's really important to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. So that's what we did. We really streamlined our efforts into the channels and places that we knew we would get the best return. And so one of the other things we're actually fortunate enough is to have some really great partner communities like Sam Bear and Islandora. Um, we've been working with them collaboratively over the past few months to uh, share best practices, learn from each other, and we use this analogy of raising all boats. So, you know, we're really in this to help each other and see uh, how we can draw on the resources that we have so that we can collectively do better for our communities, because that's really what it's all about. It's our communities and our users. And so lastly, one of the coolest things about me being new to the community and new to this industry was that I got to bring some really fresh new ideas and try new things. So this past holiday, we actually did a really fun little engagement activity with our community members. We called it Festive Fedora Frenzy, and it was essentially a little multiple choice trivia game that we sent out every day for the days before the holidays where people could answer questions, they gained points, and inevitably they uh, got entered in a draw to win a prize. So it was kind of silly and it was something new, never been tried before, but what it was, it was meant to really reconnect people with Fedora in some way and on a different level. So we got some amazing results from the participation in the activity. Um, people really seem to enjoy it. So that's, uh, that's what we're in it for is we're going to be trying more things like this because our community has told us that, you know, they really enjoy it. So on that, um, I want to show you some of the plans we have for the future. So looking to the future, based on what we've tried, we are working with a logo designer to come up with a brand new logo for Fedora 6. So this is meant to represent us moving into the, the new era of Fedora. And as such, we're going to create this logo and uh, its launch will coincide with the release of the software. And we want to make this available to our users on things like shirts and mugs, et cetera, things like that. 
Um, the other thing that we want to do is have a launch party for Fedora 6 once the software is ready to go. And so what this is, is really meant to be recognition for our contributors and all of the people that have helped get us to this milestone. So a celebration for all those involved, as well as for the software itself. Um, it's really important that we give recognition where recognition is due. These people have worked very, very hard to get us to this point, and uh, it's definitely something that we feel we should be celebrating. And the other thing that we are planning to do is offering workshops on a regular basis so that we can provide training opportunities to get the community more involved. Uh, Fedora 6 has some great new features and the aim of the workshops is to um, make sure that the community can successfully adopt the software, use it and be actively engaged with it. So these are going to be offered regularly and um, at the needs of the community so uh, that they can you know, continue to adopt and use the software. So the reason that we're doing all of these activities is really for our users. Um, it's important for us to let them know that we're here to support them and making sure that Fedora 6 is successful and that we're securing our user buy-in and our community buy-in and adoption. Um, we wanna make sure that the community is seeing value in the engagement that we're offering through the training and the recognition um, and the support that we're providing. Um, so the more that we can get our community members engaged with us, the more that we know that Fedora Will be top of mind and and that's really what uh, what our goal is here we want to make sure that uh, we're giving our users what they're asking for and so with that i'm going to pass it back to david and he will uh, just wrap up for us here thanks aaron um, so hopefully it gives you a sense of what's going on with uh, fedora this year uh, releasing fedora 6 releasing the migration tooling working on uh, the grant to support uh, migrations and adoptions and all the great work that we're doing on the community engagement side to make sure that Fedora users are engaged and plugged in and have opportunities to uh, use the software uh, to get training when they need it uh, and to participate in uh, community events together. Um, we've included a few links here and, and we'll share the slides um, so you can follow along with some of the things that we're working on, such as the monthly blog post for the grant. Um, you can join the conversation in Slack. Uh, and if you're not already a member, you can uh, help us out by joining uh, and supporting us uh, so that Fedora can continue to be uh, successful and sustainable uh, into the future. So our email addresses are here if you want to get in touch with us um, and you can reach out anytime. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for uh, your attention.